Hi, I'm Jason and welcome to another video. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to easily rip any of your DVDs using two pieces of software. And the reason I'm going to use two pieces of software, I will explain later on. But the main program we're going to use is something called Make MKV. So that's the first piece of free software that you need to download. I'll put a link in the description as to where to go and get it. The second piece of software is called Handbrake. I'm sure a lot of people are quite familiar with Handbrake. Um, and the reason we're going to be using Handbrake after we've used it at Make MKV is because we can re-encode the MKV format to something more usable on most of your devices, to something like MP4. And it sort of considerably shrinks down the size of the actual file, and you'll see what I mean as we go. So like I said, if we open up a browser and you just search for make MKV, you'll see the website here, makemkv.com. And you can download MKV for Windows. Unfortunately, it's only Windows at this stage. Now, notice that it says, welcome to make MKV beta. And that's that word beta is important to know as well, which I will show you now. So when you've downloaded and installed Make MV and you double click it to run it, it will immediately start to scan whatever is in your DVD drive. Now, I've already put a movie in my DVD drive and you can see there where it says type DVD and label cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Great film. So I'd like to digitize this for the use on my pad when I'm going on holiday or for the kids, you know, stuff like that. But because this is still in the beta stage, there is a registration key that we need to look out for. I think it's at least once a month. If I go up to help and register, we can see we've got a license key here. Don't worry, it's not a license key you have to pay for. And again, I will leave a link in the description and the link should take you to this website where it says the current beta key is, and there it is, that's the key that you copy and you paste into that registration area like that I just showed you. And it says here, this is valid until the end of May 2025. It's uh, April at the moment for me, as you can see in the bottom right hand corner of my screen. So I'm good to go for the next month. So with that done, we can carry on. And the first thing I'm going to do, because like I said, I've already put my disk in the DVD drive. I'm just going to click on this icon here to open the DVD disk. And it will start to scan all of the information on the disk. And this might take a few minutes because bear in mind the PC that I'm using is a very low powered mini PC with an N1 Pro processor. I know that might not mean a lot to a lot of people, but if you've got an i5 laptop or an i7 or something like that, it's going to be considerably quicker than mine. But as you can see, it finished fairly quickly and we can see up in the top left here, we've got the title with 28 chapters. It's 3.6 gigabytes in size. If I drop this little arrow down, we can see we've got um, two sets of 5.1 audio sound. We've got subtitles in English, subtitles in Hindi, and for some reason, subtitles in English again. Well, I'm going to get rid of those because I don't really want to move those over. Now, these two, one of these will be generally the sound of the film all the way through. The other one will be an audio walkthrough. Um, I forget the name of what you call it now, but someone talking about what's happening in the background. I already know the second one there is going to be that, so I'm going to switch that off as well. But sometimes it's trial and error. I would say go for the top audio 5.1 and you should be safe to go with that. The second thing we need to do is look at the output folder where we're going to send this MKV file to. So as you can see here, mine goes to an external drive, which is a D drive under a folder called videos. And if I just literally click make MKV, it will ask me this, uh, this folder doesn't yet exist. Do you want to create it? Well, yes, I do. Thank you very much. And then off it goes into ripping the movie that I've set into a .mkv format. 
And with the power of video, I'm going to speed this process up. So here we are, forward in time. We're just coming to the end of uh, the video being ripped. And there we go, copy complete, one title saved. I'm going to say OK to that. Um, what did that take, eight minutes, something like that? I didn't look. Um, so we have our ripped file, and just to double check it, we're going to close this now because we don't need it any longer. And I'm going to use VLC Player to view the movie because it's in MKV format. Uh, VLC is a great player to play all sorts of weird and wonderful video file extensions. Um, but let's go to our downloads folder where we put it, which was our external G drive under video. And there it is, cloudy with a chance of meatballs. So if I right click and say open with VLC, you can see the movie starts playing. Let's turn the volume down. I don't want to get any infringements on copyright. Let's just skip through a little bit, put the volume up. Everybody. So we can we can see we've got audio. So that's it ripped, but if I right click it and have a look at the properties of it, we can see it's 3.33 gigabytes in size, which I think is a bit hefty. Um, and we could certainly half that or even more than half it by using the next step, which is going to be handbrake to re-encode it from MKV to MP4. So let's open handbrake. And the first thing that we can do here is drag and drop the file straight into Handbrake. So let's go and open that folder again. Go into Videos, go into my movie there, and I'm just going to pick it up, drag and drop. And we can see we've already got a preview in the window here, so you could skip through and have a look and see how it looks to you, but looks fine to me. Now, one thing I am going to say is this is preset to fast 1080p by 30. Well, I'm probably going to get shot down for saying this, but DVDs are generally made in an as aspect, well, they're made in the same aspect ratio as 1080p, obviously, uh, 16 by 9. But the resolution of a DVD tends to be 720 by 576, I think it is, for the UK. So there's no point really in me re-encoding this at 1080p because, well, it's just not, the quality isn't 1080p anyway. So I'm going to change this to just fast 720p because that's what the DVD format resolution is. And plus the fact it's going to shrink our file down a lot smaller anyway. Now, I tend to leave everything as it is, but I'm just going to quickly go through different dimensions. So the resolution limit, 720 HD. Filters, I'm not worried about. The video, I'm happy to leave it at whatever is set. The audio, again, it's picked up AC3, 5.1 channels at 448 kilobits a second. Yeah, I'm not going to change anything. The only thing I would be interested in is where is it going to encode it to? Well, if we look down the bottom here, we can see save as, and then it's got users, my name, video. So it's going to put it in my video folder, and it's going to give this name. You can change that if you like. I'm just going to leave it as it is. So let's go back to the summary. And we can already see, I forgot to mention, the format is going to be MP4 which I'm happy with. So all I need to do now is hit the button, start encode. And then you will see on the bottom left hand side of the screen here, it is starting to encode. And again, it says the time remaining is 19 minutes and something sepen seconds. But again, Bear in mind, I've got a very low-powered PC, and I'm sure yours will be a lot faster in doing this. In fact, if you've got a computer with a really good graphics card, there's one other suggestion I can make. If I go back to the presets up here, what you may find in yours, let's say you've got an NVIDIA card, if I scroll down, 
you might have an option like H265 NVENC is an NVIDIA graphics card. If you were to use that, it would considerably shorten the encoding time down because it puts all the load on your graphics card. So if you've got a good graphics card, it's always worth going with this. Preferably, I'd say H264, but it's just something to consider. I've left mine pretty much default using the built-in graphics that come with my mini PC along with the cores of the processor. And that's why it's quite slow to do on mine. So with the power of video again, let's speed up time. Welcome back. That looks like it's finished. So let's have a look in our videos folder. Videos. Uh, I believe it was this one. So let's play it quickly. We can hear the audio and I'll skip through to a bit. There's a girl here. And we can hear the audio there. So the important question is, is how big is it compared to 3.3 gigabytes? Well, if I just wander the mouse over it, we can see the size is only 723 meg. So I'll just double check by going into properties. And there it is, 723 meg shrunk down from 3.3 gigabytes without the loss of any quality. Put, putting it in an MP4 video file enables me to, I could, uh, for example, I could move it to my NAS. I could move it to my uh, a memory stick. I could move it to an, an iPad or an Android pad or even a phone. So that is it. Uh, one other thing that just to mention, if obviously you know this has taken considerable time on my mini PC because of the low power. Um, if you suffer with a low powered PC like me, you can also come down here where it, where it says when done, and you can say. Uh, shut down the system, log off. Um, yeah, so if you wanted to leave it running overnight and it's going to take half an hour and you can't be bothered to attend it, just go here and say, when done, shut down or log off or something like that. I hope you found that tutorial useful. Thanks for watching.